Hi, thanks for taking a look at my video. My name is Mr. Brash, and this over here is Mr. Squirrel. And if you're wondering about him, maybe one day I'll do a video about the history of Mr. Squirrel. I'm going to be going over graphing parabolas. This is going to be part one of a couple different videos on graphing. I'm just going to go over the basics. So how do we graph a quadratic relation? And if you're not sure what a quadratic relation is, which looks like a parabola on a graph, you might want to check out a previous video or some Khan Academy videos on what that is. So the most basic parabola is y equals x squared. No extra numbers on it, and there's no adding values or anything like this. And in a previous video, I showed the graph of y equals x squared. It's something you're going to want to get used to. And the idea here with any graphing, could be lines, could be parabolas, could be whatever, x is our input variable, otherwise known as our independent variable. So it is independent. It gets to pick what the answer is going to be. So that's independent, horrible penmanship. Over here, the y value, that's our output. That is dependent. The output depends on the input. You're going to need to know that for maybe some future math. All right, we're going to do this from tables of values in this video. And then in other videos, we're going to do it straight from the different equations that you can write. So let's take a look at a couple examples over here. And I'm going to do two different examples on the same Cartesian plane. The first one being here the most basic parabola. And then I'll do a second one over here on this horizontal table of values. And sometimes, especially in textbooks and websites and stuff like that, they'll do tables of values horizontally like this to save space. Typically on your paper while you're doing your own math, you would do a table of values vertically. Now there's no magic to doing a table of values. It's just about math. It's just about doing the input to create the output. So as we put negative three into X, what that really looks like is negative three inside what was the letter X and that is squared. So the reason why I'm writing this down and going over this is because the negative is part of this value. We have to square the negative as well as the number. And so what I end up with is a positive answer of nine and at any point in time clearly you can pause this video and move ahead and that sort of thing so i'm going to square negative two and get a four and that'll also be positive positive. and that's one of the really important properties of quadratics or parabolas is that because we're squaring the input values the output of that squaring is positive now that doesn't mean that it's always going to be a positive answer which i'll show you in the second example so now that I have a table of values, we're going to need to graph this and connect the dots. Connecting the dots really depends on your own drawing abilities, how shaky your hands are and that sort of thing. And so we're going to plot my zero, zero. I, the reason why I started with zero, zero is it's our vertex. And you might not have noticed that. But as we go from the beginning of the table of values, it goes down nine, four, one to zero, but then it counts back up one, four, nine. And that's one of the major properties of parabolas is this idea of a turning point or a vertex. Now, if we wanted to graph the other points, maybe in the order that we see them on the table of values, it's as simple as just going to negative three, plotting a nine, going to negative two, plotting a four, at negative one, we're at one, and then there's that zero, zero that I showed. But then when we get to positive one, we're at one again. And so you can see the turning point. At two, we're at four, and at three, we're at nine. Now it's really important that when you're graphing a parabola, you don't connect with a straight line. We don't draw a nice, perfect straight line with a ruler from one to the next, because in fact, it's a curve. And so that's why it's a little bit difficult to graph these things. And my drawing tablet here likes to do little wavy lines as I, as I draw. And so we get this nice curvature and you know, it's not going to be perfect. You might not get the exact values as you go from one major point to the next, but we're really only going to ever focus on these whole number values for our points. As with any graph, you should put arrows on the ends if it goes forever. And this one does. And I'm also going to lab and I'm also going to label this as y equals x squared. So that's your basic parabola. We may call that the parent function. So this right over here, you may hear that as being called the parent function in the future. That's because it is sort of the beginning of all parabolas. And then what we're going to do is we're going to see these parabolas drawn upside down, over to the left, over to the right, taller, shorter, thinner, wider, all sorts of different things. All right, I'm going to do a second example. I'm going to just make up my equation. So we're going to do a different one here. Let's say y equals, and I'm going to put some values in front of my x. So for instance, I'll put a negative, and then maybe I'll put an x plus four inside the bracket. 
and I'll square that. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the square for the x and I'm modifying what's going on on the inside of that. And then let's just do, oh, I don't know, let's, uh, let's add 3. So we'll add 3. So what we do is we get this equation here, and you might need some scrap paper to do your answers on, maybe even a calculator, but you're going to be plugging in numbers for x as you go and seeing what you get for a y value. It is pretty useful to use typical values for your x, some negatives, usually zero, and some positives, but you start to, as you get better at this, realize what you should and should not put in. So for example, because there's a plus four here, I'll probably want to put in negative four because negative four and four make zero and zero is a really easy number to work with. So actually that might be where I start. So let's just put in a negative four as my first X, uh, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And we'll just see where we get with this. So when we put our values in negative four plus four is zero, zero squared is zero. There's no such thing as negative zero. I'm at an X or a Y rather of three. Negative three plus four is one. One squared is also one. That's now a negative one. Hmm, negative one plus three, that's two. And if you want, you can plot them as you go. You just gotta be careful to make sure you're not making any algebra mistakes as you do this. So when I was at negative four, I'm up here at three, right there. When I was at negative three, I'm up here at two. Let's see what happens when I'm at negative two. So negative two plus four is two. I'm gonna square my two and get four. That's now a negative four plus three, which is negative one. So at negative two, I'm down here at negative one. I'll put in a, a negative one rather, I'll put in a negative one. So negative one plus four, that's three. Three squared is nine. That grew pretty quickly, didn't it? I'll do that again. Negative one plus four, that's three. Three squared is nine. Now I'm at negative nine. Negative nine plus three is negative six. So at negative one, I'm down all the way down here at negative six. So that, that really dropped off quickly. And what that means is our next point, if I put zero, my next point is gonna be way, way, way off the graph. So it might not be useful to do the, the next values of zero, one, and two. Let's change that up, shall we? Going to the right was going to cause me to go down off the graph. Let's go to the left. Let's put in negative five and negative six and see what we get negative five and negative six. So if I put negative five into this equation, negative five plus four is negative one. I'll square the negative one and get positive one. Multiply that by a negative, well, it's negative again. So this is negative one plus three, which is two. So at negative five, I'm up here at two. And again, when you do this algebra, you might wanna do this on scrap paper plug it into a calculator, however it is you wanna do that. So negative six, I'll put negative six in for my x, I'll add four. Negative six plus four is negative two. I will square my negative two, that's positive four. But that gets modified, it gets multiplied by that negative one. So positive four, negative one, that's negative four. So this is now negative four in here. Negative four plus three is negative one. And we can see the pattern, which I'll talk about in a second. So over here at negative six, I'm down at negative one. So let's talk about that pattern, but we'll talk about it from the graph because the order of this table of values is now out of order when I modified just right here when I did two extra values. So let's take a talk, talk about that pattern here. So we're negative one, up to two, up to three, back down to two, back down to negative one. And then we saw down, way down here, right, negative six. So because there's an axis of symmetry, right, like if we remember our properties of a parabola, because there's this axis of symmetry that goes down the center there, it stands to reason that there's going to be a point over here at negative six. At negative seven, I should get answer of negative six. And we can try that out too in our table of values. So go over here and I'll say, okay, what do I get if I plug in a negative seven into this equation? Negative seven plus four, negative three negative three squared, nine. Now it's negative nine, negative nine plus three is negative six. So I was correct in that assumption. And I can connect the dots like this all the way down. Oh, almost made that connection. 
and we'll do this one all the way down. And again, it's a curve, not straight lines. So when I'm making my table of values, and I did do the green one in somewhat of a messy fashion because I guessed numbers and then I had to sort of erase and redo, but you get to pick the X values. And so whatever you put in for the X values, you just have to do the math to get your Y values. Should it be in sort of a nice, neat, orderly fashion? Oh, sure, that's fine. But we're just practicing right now. All right, so this is my second equation right here, this green one, and we can see a couple different things. We can see this parabola opens downward. It's concave down. We have a different axis of symmetry, of a different vertex. It's been moved to the left. It's been moved upward. And so these sort of properties of this parabola is something you'll come across when you start dealing with the equations. All right, speaking of equations, just one last thing that I want to talk about is the three different standard sort of forms you'll notice when dealing with quadratic relations, otherwise known as parabolas. And I'm going to call them quadratic relations because I don't want to get that mixed up with something called a quadratic equation or quadratic formula. Okay, standard form. Standard form here we have a, so that would be some sort of number. We don't know what that is, but we would have a number there, whether it's one, two, who cares? ax squared plus bx, so that would be another coefficient, some other number, plus c, and that might be another value. It could even, it could even be zero, that's a possibility. That there's nothing wrong with putting zero there. Now speaking of zero, when the b value actually is zero, so if, if the b value in the middle here was zero, it would look like this ax squared plus c. Now what does that look like, ax squared plus c? Well, if you recall your equation of a line, that sort of looks like mx plus b, or mx plus anything, really, some sort of constant value. There's a second form that we would use here and, and see this in. It's called factored form. And if you recall, when we do factor things, we end up with an equation that looks something like, oh, I don't know, x plus two, x minus three. Just as an example, you might see something like this. Well, the S and the T are just going to be numbers. And it does say X minus S and X minus T. So keep that in mind. But it's okay if there's positive values in here. So the S and the T will both be numbers. And they could potentially be zero as well as the A, B, and C up here. The A value down in front will be a number, a very important number. And you might notice that there's a bit of a trend here. I have an A in the first equation. I have an A in the second equation here. This is a valid thing to try and graph. It's just a matter of doing the mathematics or arithmetic correctly on this. And the third form that you might see in your future, and actually you saw it in this video up above in my uh, second example, is called vertex form. And I don't want to give too much away, but the H is going to be a number. The K is going to be a number. And it could both be zero. That's totally fine. And the a value is here as well. So we see another equation with an a out in front. And yes, that a would match the a here, which would match the a here. And just for you know keeping things similar, when the h value is zero, so if h is nothing, we just have x squared, it looks like this, ax squared plus k, which looks a lot like our equation of a line, just that x is squared. I find that kind of interesting. So those are the three different ways or three different forms that you might see an equation of a quadratic. We can graph from all three of them just by using a table of values. But as we get better, we're going to be able to graph directly from factored form and directly from vertex form without a table of values. And that would be super handy. Standard form, not so easy to graph from but it's factored in vertex, we should be able to take those equations, even this one right here, this sample equation that I've got, I should be able to take a look at that and graph that without having to make a table of values. Wouldn't that be nice? And that'll be in my future videos, part two and part three of graphing quadratics. Okay, so that's it. That's how to graph a quadratic or a parabola from a table of values. Obviously, there are other videos online that deal with this exact same thing. I highly recommend you check out Khan Academy and all of those other places for these videos. My name is Mr. Brash. This guy's name is Mr. Squirrel, and he approves this video. And I hope that you watch some of my other ones. If you feel like it, give me a like. Maybe put a comment in, some constructive, constructive criticism for my videos. And if you're in any way interested, go ahead and subscribe. I'd appreciate that as well. Have a great day and keep practicing math.